Welcome to this demo of the IoT Internet of Things Connected Car. Let's go ahead and start up the system. So the first thing we're going to start up is Spring XD. This is going to first start our Gemfire in a single node, as well as load some initial data into Gemfire. And then finally, it will go ahead and start up the single node version of Spring XD. So we can see Gemfire has started, and it's going to go ahead and start up Spring XD now. While that's going, we can also start up our analytics module. This is a Python module, and the model for the analytics has actually been generated offline from past journeys, past drives that we have recorded. So this will receive messages from Spring XD via RabbitMQ, do the enrichments and analytics on the messages, which includes calculating the MPG, the miles per gallon, the predicted range for fuel, as well as the predicted journeys and their probabilities. And then it'll put those messages back on RabbitMQ to be fed back into Spring XD. All right, so it looks like Spring XD is just about started. So we can go ahead and load the Spring XD shell, the command line interface. And we're going to use this to create a couple of streams, which are actually defined here. So let's take a look at these. The first stream that we're going to be creating is the HTTP stream, which is going to take messages off of HTTP, do some enrichment to them, convert them to JSON, and then send them off to Rabbit on the receive queue, which is where our analytics module will pick them up. The second stream here, actually below, is our HDFS stream. So this one will pick them back off of Rabbit and then send them off to HDFS in a certain directory with a certain name and timeouts. And finally, the third stream is actually a tap that will tap the HDFS stream and then send the messages off into Gemfire um, in a JSON format. So let's go ahead and load this so we can do script file and then this is on the desktop in stream create. So we're going to go ahead and load these three streams. And that's done. We can do stream list. And we can see we have the three streams and they have been deployed. So we're done deploying. We can close out that. Next up, we're going to go ahead and start the REST API. This is a very thin spring-based REST API sitting on top of Gemfire to serve up the JSON messages for the dashboard. And we're going to go ahead and start up the dashboard as well. This is an HTML5, CSS, and JavaScript dashboard, which consumes the JSON messages off of the REST API to display them. And since those are up, we can go ahead and start up our drive. So in this case, we're using some drives that we recorded from Dallas, Texas. So we're starting at what we call our home, the Renaissance Hotel, and then we can drive to one of these four locations. So in this case, we're going to head to what we call work or the Omni Hotel. So this is the same drive that we recorded down in Dallas. This simulator is simply going to play back that drive, sending one message a second into Spring XD over HTTP. So let's go ahead and start up this drive. All right, so this is executing. And I should mention that this is using Spring Batch and Spring Boot. And actually, most of these components, even the REST API as well as the dashboard, are also using Spring Boot. So now we can go ahead and bring up the dashboard. And behind the scenes, you're going to start to see the dashboard getting the JSON messages and the messages flowing through. But the first thing that we can see is a map. So we can go ahead and see on this map our current location, which is at the Renaissance Hotel. And we've started our engine, so we can see the speed of the vehicle. We can see the RPMs. We can see the coolant temperature, as well as the fuel level. So nearly a full tank. And we can continue to watch here the, the tracking of the vehicle in real time. And then we can bump over to the Journeys tab. And this Journeys tab is most of the information's that, information that's coming from our analytics module. So we see the instantaneous miles per gallon. So this will change drastically based on whether we're accelerating or braking or cruising. 
we can see the predicted range. So based on how we're driving and how much fuel we have, this is how much our analytics calculates we can go. And then we can see all the past journeys that we've taken, as well as their probabilities. So right now we're just starting off from the hotel. You know, it looks like there's a chance we could be going to the Omni, Sandy Lake Amusement Park, Babe's Chicken House, or the Flying Saucer. Uh, at this point, there's not a chance that we're going to the Indian restaurant. So as we start to drive more, it will narrow down and decide where we're going, which we already know is the Omni Hotel. So we can come back and look at this and see how it's updating in a second. We'll go ahead and take a look again at the map. I believe at this point they were stuck at a stoplight, but are finally now getting onto the highway. And now that they're getting onto the highway going a specific direction, yeah, it should really start to narrow down the possibilities of where they're going. So, and it bounces a bit, but it, it's primarily the Omni Hotel now, as well as Sandy Lake's going to zero, Flying Saucer's also quite likely. And that's mainly because based on this direction that they're going, where they're starting the time of day, you know, it's probably the Flying Saucer or the Omni Hotel down here in central Dallas. So we can also take a look at RabbitMQ. So RabbitMQ is being used both for the internal messaging inside of Spring XD, as well as sending the messages to the Python's analytic piece. So the emit and receive queues are what's going to and from the Python component. And then the rest of these are the internal queues that Spring XD is using. So we can see that we're seeing one message a second. We have one car sending messages one message a second. We can see those flowing through. Now we can also take a look at the Spring XD console and look at the streams. We can see that we have our three streams deployed. And if we wanted to, we could undeploy or destroy them. And finally, if you really want to get into the details, we can take a look at the raw JSON that is being sent to the dashboard. So this is a point in time message showing all the information on the car. And then we can also look at the past journeys to see what the, the destinations were. So for example, the Omni Hotel. So we can take a look back here one more time and go ahead and look that it's still bouncing between the Flying Saucer and the Omni Hotel. So once we get past the Flying Saucer, it'll figure out for sure that we are heading to the Omni Hotel based on our past journeys. So let's take a look at one more thing. We're going to bounce over to our Pivotal HD single node environment. And we can actually go ahead and do a query on HDFS. And this is the directory we configured in our stream. So inside of here, we have three JSON files, one temporary one, which is the one that we're currently filling up, and then some past files that we've been writing into. So we can go ahead and take a look at one of these. Now there's gonna be a lot of information in here scrolling by quickly. But at the end, you can see that it's the same JSON messages that we were using before, and it will have the enrichment information in there, so the probabilities on the end locations. And then we can also fire up our interface through PSQL into Hawk. And then we have a table to find called Connected Car. So we can actually do a select from our table and get this in a tabular format. There's a, a lot of columns in here, so that's a little hard to read, but let's just select a, uh, a subset of those tables. So we'll look at the timestamp, longitude, and latitude for, for five of the entries. So we can do the SQL query and start to see the timestamp, longitude, and latitude. So we could do a lot more advanced things with, with Hawk and SQL to start to query this information, do analytics on it, and rebuild our model. So we'll take one more look at the dashboard. And it looks like they've passed the point of no return for heading to the Omni Hotel. And yes, that's correct. So based on our past journeys, we are now confident that they're heading to the Omni Hotel in Dallas, which is what we selected. So thank you for watching the demo of the IoT Connected Car.